Welcome back to Newsmax Now. I'm Miranda Khan. Time now to take a look at some of your money news. Western Union restarts its money transfer service in Greece today after closing down in shops for about a week now. The company says Greek customers can now receive funds from overseas accounts but can only withdraw 60 euros a day. Saudi Arabia is set to invest $10 billion in Russia. According to CNBC, Russian officials say this is an important deal and signs that there is a warming in relations between the two countries. A multi-billion dollar project will take place over the next five years. Florida Senator and presidential hopeful Marco Rubio is set to deliver a major economic speech today. The 2016 candidate hopes to set himself apart from the packed GOP field by defending his tax reform plan. After today's speech in Chicago, Rubio will head to the key states of Iowa and Nevada. A longtime face of Subway becomes the target of a child pornography investigation. Indiana police searched Jared Fogel's home earlier today, and according to local reports, the investigation comes after officers arrested the executive director of Jared's foundation on child pornography charges. If you already grabbed a cup of Joe at Starbucks today, well, you might have noticed something. The company raised its prices today with increases ranging between 5 to 20 cents per drink. Breast milk is starting to become big business. A third for-profit milk bank is set to open soon. The growing industry is starting to get attention from regulators in places like New Jersey and Michigan. Some women say they're able to sell breast milk for two or three dollars an ounce. Thank you for that update, Miranda. Joining us now to go in depth on some of the top financial stories of the day is Tom Hutchinson, senior financial editor of the High Income Factor newsletter. Tom, thanks for being here today. Let's get right into it. We know what voters in Greece don't want. That's new austerity measures, voting 61 to 39 percent against the referendum. What do they want? What's the next step for the government there? Well, you know, this is like the the crisis that never ends. Every week, this is the lead story. I can't wait till it goes away. But I don't know what those voters want. I think they want aid without having to do any austerity for it. And you know what? They're not going to get it. Because the way things have unfolded, they sort of put the other, uh, the northern European countries in a bind. Because now there's a, a risk of a contagion they're not prepared for. And that is... If they let the Greek voters thumb their nose at them and give them aid anyway, then the other peripheral countries like Spain and Italy will want the same kind of deal. And that's a slippery slope to go down. So I don't think they can give in now. So I think Greece is in for big trouble. Yeah, a lot of limbo still in Greece. There also seems to be some disagreement over whether the Greek debt crisis will have any effects on us here in the United States. Wall Street took a slight dip yesterday. But Tom, at this point, are there any investors touched by the events in Greece? Well, you know, this is a five-year-old problem. And people have had a long time to adjust for a Greek crisis. Uh, so I think the contagion will be very controlled. And really, you know, the, the news that's, uh, that's happened, the no vote, was sort of greeted with a bit of a yawn from debt markets around the world. So, uh, you know, if, if they truly go under and crisis hits, there may be some volatile days, but I think we can easily absorb it. Yeah, unfortunately, this is happening all too often. As you mentioned, investors seem like they're experienced when it comes to this. Uh, If we're looking at Greece, now you're a student of economics, you're looking at Greece, it's in the textbook. What lessons can be learned from the missteps in Athens? Well, that there is a limit to how much other people's money you can spend. Eventually, it runs out. You know, you rob Peter to pay Paul, and uh, you can do that for a while and then you get a nation of Pauls and nobody to pay the bills. You know, the problem is when these, these governments become strapped, what they tend to do is raise taxes and, and then try to cut spending. It's the wrong way to go. You have to encourage private sector growth and expand the private sector and shrink the government. Uh, but it's more politically palatable to go the other way. Uh, so this is an example for the whole world, for even us. Tom, we got about 30 there's seconds. There's a limit. There is a limit. And one more question. We're learning that hundreds of Chinese companies have stopped trading over there. What's going on with stocks in China? And is that where the real concern for the United States investors lies? 
Yeah, it really could be a concern because what's going on in China, the real short answer is nobody ever really knows. But what's happened is the market went up like 150% in a year and now it's correcting and it's correcting very quickly. It's down like 30% from its highs. Now, it could be that just, uh, you know, it's a wild west market and this is what happens when it goes down, but nobody's really sure. And there really is some concern about the Chinese economy. It's the slowest it's been in decades. And if stocks keep falling and it's uh, understood that, that the poor Chinese economy is what's behind this, the global economy could be in for more trouble. I'm going to jump in right really there, one Tom. To watch. Thank you so much. Always so much uncertainty, and you put it into focus for us. Remember, to learn more about the high income factor, simply go to www.moneynews.com slash HIF. We're coming right back with a look at some global news, including an anniversary in England.